when you are new to this hobby, it makes sense to start with micro drones. With micro drones, you don't have to worry about many of the regulations that pilots in the small RPA category are bound to follow. Hello Canadian drone pilots and to everyone else watching right now, what is going on? It's nice to see you again and if this is your first time here, my name is Roy and you are watching Creative Aerial Shots. My very first drone was a Mini 2 and I live in controlled airspace. But I can fly legally from my backyard. I can fly around in my busy neighborhood since it's under 250 grams so I was able to practice my piloting skills. But many sub-250 drone pilots become too complacent, not knowing there's more to it than just the don't do anything stupid rule. Sad to say, some don't even know about the CARS 900.06. And because of this ignorance, they are consequently breaking rule after rule. I remember last year, during the wildfire season. There were drone pilots charged in Alberta because they were flying close to the Chittamon wildfire near Jasper. The area around the wildfire is a hub of intense aviation activity. Air tankers, helicopters, and float planes working. The fire can be found anywhere in the area, picking up water from lakes and rivers. These water bombers flying in the smoke are difficult to see. The presence of unauthorized aircraft, including drones, highly contribute to the risk of mid-air collision and can seriously disrupt the work of the fire suppression crews, endangering the lives and well-being of pilots and Parks Canada firefighters. The incident in Chittamon affected the fire operations. Aircrafts were grounded causing unnecessary delay in the firefighting efforts. It is illegal to fly a drone of any size in national parks without approval from Parks Canada. And this wildfire happened to be within the boundaries of Jasper National Park. According to the news, each person will face a fine of up to $25,000 for multiple violations. I often hear these words from sub-250 flyers that it's better to beg forgiveness than ask permission. Well, not in this case. Certainly not when it comes to thousands of dollars in fines. The only way to escape fines is to avoid violations. The best way to avoid violations is to follow the rules. The question is, how do you follow rules you don't even know? Since ignorance of the law excuses no one, we've come to the part where I recommend you study Part 9 of the Canadian Aviation Regulations. Also, the semi-annual update in the Transport Canada Aeronautical Information Manual is published every March and October. Use the tools provided to help you identify the airspace such as the drone site selection tool and the nav drone app. The CARS 900.06 tells you not to be a hazard to aircraft and people, but understand that the rest of the regulations will guide you on how to fulfill CARS 900.06. On top of these, there are other rules outside of Transport Canada that we need to follow and they apply to all weight categories. It may seem like a lot to remember, but once you put them into practice every time you fly, it becomes second nature. Flying becomes more enjoyable if you know what you're doing. I recommend you get at least the basic license. There are situations in which you might want to fly your Mini under basic operations. Say for example, you want to fly at night to take pictures or footage of the city lights. You will need additional lighting to keep your drone visible in the dark. A strobe should do the trick, but it bumps your drone to 250 grams or higher because a sub-250 has only so much wiggle room. Your micro RPA now enters the small RPA category. We know that a small RPA needs to be registered and you need at least a basic license to fly it. 
under basic operations. But once you remove the accessory that caused your micro RPA to become a small RPA, it becomes a sub 250 again. And you don't need to unregister your Mini. Transport Canada says the registration is deactivated once your drone is back under 250 grams after you remove that extra weight. It's also activated automatically every time you fly with a takeoff weight of 250 grams or higher. Some of you are probably thinking, why not just fly your Mini without additional lighting? It's a sub 250 gram drone anyway. Technically, you can fly a micro RPA at night even without proper lighting. But you need to use your better judgment whether you are being a hazard or not. Just remember that if something happens and because of your poor decision, people get hurt, properties get damaged, CARS 900.06 along with many other violations could rain down on you. You are in a great and enjoyable hobby. Know the rules so you can fly safely and confidently. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again next time.